This video is going to show you how to solve, use Torque to solve a physics problem. To begin with, you need to have a little bit of background on how to calculate Torque so this video will make sense. And when do you use Torque? Well, you used, one of the options you have for using Torque is whenever the forces act on the body at different locations. This beam is my body. If I look at the different forces, I've got the weight of the beam, the force going up, and then the weight of the, t the rope from the hanging box going down. They don't come from the same point, so Torque becomes one of the tools I can use for solving the problems involving the beam. So here's a question. While painting a wall, a 55.6 kilogram painter is standing on a 3.15 meter long homogeneous board that is resting on two sawhorses. The board's mass is 14.5 kilograms. The sawhorse on the right is 1.00 meters from the right end. How far away can the painter walk from the sawhorse on the right until the board begins to tip? So to begin with, this is what's called a sawhorse. Carpenters will use it, handymen will use it, that's the sawhorse, it's the support. And this beam is supported by two sawhorses. Now, if I use a little bit of logic, I can actually get rid of one of the sawhorses in the calculation. I can get rid of the sawhorse on the left. You see, I want to know the location, the exact location where everything is balanced. If the painter takes one more step to the right, the beam's going to tip. If the painter takes one more step to the left, the beam's going to tip. So I'm at that perfect balance point where I don't need the left sawhorse. So I'm not going to look at that at all. To begin with, I'm going to use an extended free body diagram. That's where I don't use a dot, I use a line to represent the body, which in this case is the beam. Now I'm going to identify the forces. I've got the weight of the beam, mg, acting in the middle of it. Then I've got a normal force due to the sawhorse, or due to that support on the right, going up. And then I've got the weight of the painter going on the right-hand side. So those are my forces. I need to pick a pivot point. The pivot point that I choose, the question says how far away from the support on the right can the painter walk. So I'm going to use the support as the pivot point. By doing this, the normal force also doesn't appear in any of my calculations because the normal force points from the pivot point. So any force that points to or from your chosen pivot point, that force will not be counted in your calculations because there's no moment arm for it. So great, got rid of one of the forces. Now the numbers. The weight of the board is in the middle because it's homogeneous. Sometimes the problem will use the word uniform instead of homogeneous, but it means the same thing. And then I know that the pivot point is one meter away from the edge. By the question, it's got to be x away from the pivot points. That's where my x distance occurs. And a little bit of math shows that the distance between the center of mass of the board and the pivot point is 0.575 meters. Now I'm going to be summing up the torques. So this is how you write it down. Use a summation symbol. You have to, I'm looking for that when I'm grading these things. I'm looking for the summation symbol. I want to know what you're summing. So this is the Greek letter tau. Looks like a funky little T or part of a pi. And then I need to know also where you're pivoting around. So in this case, the right sawhorse. Don't be too cryptic in your abbreviations that someone else can't figure out what you're doing. Be descriptive because you're only going to write it once. It takes a few seconds, but write that down. The beam is not rotating, so if I add up all the torques, it's going to equal zero because that's what makes an object rotate is the torque. Now, when I'm doing torques, remember the torques come in two varieties. Any force that causes a body to rotate in a counterclockwise direction is a positive torque. Any force that causes a body to rotate around your chosen pivot point in a clockwise direction is a negative torque. So when I look at these, I've got to figure out which are negative and positive uh, torques or rotations. To do that, I'm going to use a little pencil rule trick. So with this pencil trick, what I'll do is put the pencil where my body is on the diagram, and I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to put it there at the pivot point and take my other finger and apply it to one of the forces and then I'm going to push in the direction of the force with my finger. So that causes a rotation so I can see what's going on. And in this case I can see that it's a counterclockwise rotation. So counterclockwise means a positive torque. So where I press the weight of the board times the distance of the pivot point, that torque is going to be a positive torque. So zero is equal to a positive torque of mg, the weight of the board, times the distance to that location. Now the next force is the weight of the painter. So again, I'll take my finger, put it at one point, my other finger, and put it at the force, push down the direction of the force, and I can see the direction of the rotation of the pencil. In this case, the rotation is in a clockwise direction. So that's great. That's going to be a negative torque. So when I'm doing my math, it'll be a negative force times distance for the negative torque. Weight of the painter times the distance to the painter. Now at this point, it's all equal to zero. The g's will divide out both sides of the equation. I'll move part of the expression over to the other side. Substitute in my numbers that I have up there. Do a little bit of math, and I find the distance from the right support is 0.150 meters.